Welcome Zombies to a little look at Boston, Massachusetts. Welcome zombies. Today we're checking out Boston, Massachusetts. And since this is going to be the last video in season one, I want to dedicate this one to Boston's dad. I don't know why Boston means so much to you, but I'd like to point out, I imagine it has something to do with the architecture. And today in this video, we're going to be pointing out how this architecture in Boston is left over from previous advanced prosperous civilizations that were here long before the Cowboys. And it was the Nephites who built it. So let's dive into this now. Here we are. Give a little zoom in of Boston here. Sitting on the east coast, very east coast of the United States of America. And as you can see, it points out this Bunker Hill Monument right here, which we'll definitely be taking a look at, AKA Obelisk. And so we'll see right here that the Boston Redevelopment Authority, so we're gonna take the cities that are sitting here already and we're gonna redevelop them and make them into something different than what they actually are. And you'll see right here that the BRA continued implementing eminent domain projects, which is where the GOV can take private property without the owner's consent, including the clearance, the destruction of the vibrant Scala Square. For what? Why did they do it? For construction of the modernist style GOV center. So here's a look at Scala Square. I'm not sure if that's exactly how you pronounce it, but um, and they're saying, so this is after September 1880. And let's see what we got going on here. It's looking like already very old ancient, very well-built rock, heavy, heavy, heavy architecture with, I don't know what this statue right here is made out of, but uh, some, some sort of metal, maybe copper or something like that on top, you know, just a, a monument right here is what we call it now. And then it looks like the roads here, you see some dirt, but then you also see like what seems to be a lot of brickwork. And here's another little look at it. You can see just Again, beautiful architecture here. Tons and tons and tons of brick and rock and stone, which I'm saying is the leftover architecture of previous civilizations. New civilizations show up and then start putting cheap fabric on the outside of it and plastic signs for central carpet and just little cheap banners everywhere, which does not match at all the design and style of the architecture. And I've mentioned in previous videos that in many cases, tunnels, railroads, all that stuff already here. And I think that's what we're looking at here with the Tremont Street subway. And so here's a look inside of it. The date they give it is 1898, but again, it's perfect rock, super solid rock architecture, already looking 
very weathered like it's been here a very long time. Here's another look at it. It says part of the original northbound tunnel, bottom right, right there. And, you know, so if we look at specifically this section right here, this rock wall where it has the arches in it, this isn't freshly built. This is freshly excavated. They pulled the dirt off of it. They're in the process of pulling the dirt off of it right here. Another interesting thing that it mentions is rectangular stone headhouses. A headhouse may be an enclosed building attached to an open-sided shed or above ground part of a subway station. So this is the headhouse in Philadelphia. It's a nine-story brick headhouse to the right and arched train shed with market below. And just look at how amazing this architecture is. It's perfect and it's all rock. In a time period of dirt roads, wood wheels, shovels, dynamite, no electricity, no power tools, not really means of moving that much weight. These were wood people, right? This time period was people building with wood but for some reason, when we go back and look at all of the buildings from those time period, or that are dated to that time period, I should say, they're rock, stone, marble, granite, super, super heavy, and what in nowadays are extremely, extremely expensive materials. A wood home, our homes nowadays are cabins with nicer paint on them, stick frame homes, a little bit of concrete for the foundation, and those cost $500,000, a million, two million dollars, and we have to buy debt to actually get into those. <laughs> like, but this, they did this stuff back then when they, when they were just working with wood, right? And they didn't have any electricity or power tools, but somehow they moved way more weight than we even move today for the stuff that we're building. And they used the most expensive, best materials that we almost never use nowadays because they're just too expensive and it's extremely and part of that is because it's extremely expensive to move that weight around even with our trains our tractors our cars our boats our technology our power tools our cranes our track like it moving on here's another look at one in a head house in new york city and again same thing and by the way this same exact architecture I mentioned at the beginning of the video, it's, it's built by a, a previous advanced civilization that was worldwide. And that's why you can find these exact same styles of architecture, like this same type of design, uh, this same type of stonework on the, on the uh, like corners of the building, running up and down on the brick, uh, the pillars, the arches, all of it, the same all over the world. United States of America, in France, in Argentina, in Asia, it doesn't matter, you can find it everywhere. The only difference is the story behind it and the time periods that it's dated to, but if you just use your eyeballs, it's all built by the same people right, in, right around the same time periods, and they absolutely had to have machines and power tools to be able to put up these types of structures. And we multiplied exceedingly and spread upon the face of the land and became exceedingly rich in gold, silver, precious things, fine workmanship of wood, in buildings and in machinery, also in iron, copper, brass, steel, making all manner of tools of every kind to till the ground, and weapons of war, the sharp pointed arrow, quiver, dart, javelin, and all preparations for war. And then I thought I'd point out a picture on this page. So we've got the Green Line, which is a light rail system in Massachusetts, in Boston. And I wanted to show you this picture right here, where we see the top of the filled in Kenmore portal. Again, ancient buried architecture right here. It's kind of obvious. Here's the blue line. And I thought this picture was very telling again, where we're seeing all the same ancient architecture as in any other place of the world. And everything here already looking very weathered, very old. 
and it's all rock stone very very heavy very much the most advanced type of architecture that you can build in any other part of the world it's older and i guess real fast i should throw in this picture right here just to give you an idea of what i'm actually trying to say when things are buried I'm talking this type of height and railways and tunnels at every level of these cities and so they could be 90 percent buried and that top 10 percent we're still seeing amazing railroads amazing tunnels amazing palaces all that sort of stuff canalways everything and over the years more and more and more have our old ancient railways and canals been decommissioned and put out of service no longer in use why well because cars are better right wrong cars are less efficient they're much more expensive and they cause a lot 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 more death how many people die in car accidents every year how many people have been in accidents in their cars now let's compare that to train travel yeah basically no deaths when it comes to trains. I know you just pictured in your head what you've seen in movies of trains crashing and exploding. Impact with at least three of these buildings directly below will be unavoidable as will contact with all the fuel storage tanks situated here. What actually happens in life is cars crashing and exploding and people dying. In trains, that almost never happens. And yeah, so right here we see that this one um, just before being demolished. It's like, what is the reason for demolishing this? And you know how, like, this would be extremely difficult to build in those time periods. So we're just going to demolish it because cars, right? Because we need to introduce more debt. We need to separate people and we need debt and death and this church building was designed between 1870 and 1872 so two years they designed it and it was completed in 1873 so i mean if we're saying they're doing construction the whole time three years only for this thing but it almost might sound like they're trying to say they designed it for two years and then built it which would put it in the time frame of like a year to build this thing Let's have a look at it. Yeah, that looks like a quick build. We could throw that up pretty fast, right? <laughs> massive, massive towers made out of pure stone with huge arches and pillars and a, a, a copper dome right here, just a massive copper dome. We're also gonna throw some Celtic crosses on it. Let's, let's make sure it has gorgeous rose windows. I mean, this is, just look, just use the eyeballs. This thing's way, way, way older than a couple hundred years. This is a piece of a castle that's probably been here for a thousand, two thousand years. That's a much more accurate timeline. Here's a look at the interior of it. As if the outside wasn't telling us enough, we can come into the inside and yeah, because that's how we build nowadays, right? Extremely loud musical organs on the inside. And let's go, Somewhere on the building, let's find a little spot. Let's scratch into the rock the dates that we want to give on it. And this was built in 1873, like we talked about, just because they were capable and wanted to. I mean, the cowboys, the coal miners, right? They wanted, like, this is what they were into. Not ancient people. We don't find this stuff in all the other places around the world. We don't find this, like, this is unique to American cowboys and coal miners. Also have Haymarket Square here, but just like Scully Square, it needed to be demolished to make way for Central Artery and Government Center. So just ancient architecture, beautiful, extremely well built. We gotta get rid of it because the GOV needs some more buildings. And then we've got the Massachusetts State House, which is 
the Capitol building, but some states have Capitol buildings and some states Capitol building is called a state house. Massachusetts is one of the few states that has a state house instead of a Capitol building. Why that is exactly, I've tried to research a little bit. I haven't come up with a good answer quite yet. If any of you know, let me know in the comments. That would be really interesting to hear about. And we'll see again, another very quick build. <laughs> I mean, our, our stick frame homes many times don't even get built this fast. Three years, 1795 to 1798. And they do say that some of, there were additions later on added to it, but even without the additions, which were probably already there in the first place, this thing is way too impressive for just three years. And this is really silly to me. So the original wood dome, which leaked, then was covered in copper. It was first painted gray and then light yellow before being gilded with gold leaf in 1874. The dome, in World War II, the dome was painted gray once again. And then in 97, at a cost of more than $300,000, the dome was re-gilded in 23K gold. So here's the pictures that they give us. Here's one of them. There's a look at the gold dome there. And this is where they say the copper dome was first painted gray to appear as stone and then was gilded is stone. Was stone, is stone, gilded in gold. Because everything else in Boston is all rock, stone and brick, but this dome, this amazing dome that they decided to put on this building, wood. And we have another little look at it here, and this is a really cool, um, I mean, this isn't a straight photograph, but this is what they say it looked like in 1841. So here's the state house on top of a hill, like I mentioned earlier. Talk more about hills, a lot more about hills, hills in later videos. And then you'll see over here, there's a big, huge granite, I believe granite, obelisk poking up, which, yeah, cowboys just wanted to put up a bunch of obelisks all over the country because obelisks aren't ancient architecture. They're <laughs> 18, 1900s architecture, right? And this is another thing I'll talk about where we're seeing a lot more water here. And I don't know the exact dates, but let's just roughly say prior to like 1850-ish, uh, America was much more islands. Like the whole, what we think of as the mainland was actually much more islands than it is now. And then let's just call it disaster swept through the entire face of this land and changed it into dirt and buried a lot of what was previously there and so that's why instead of there being water and the state house palace at the top of a hill we're just up to here now and everything below it is dirt and buried and then the gov went out and took pictures on all the new dirt roads and said nah look the cowboys built it with dirt roads and shovels when no these were full cities built by ancient, ancient civilizations. And when Spain came over and discovered, they came over to conquer and grab these cities and own them, and they did. And now we've been lied to about it. And so here's a look at the new dirt. Here's our dirt road story now. We've got a horse and buggy posing right there. We've got the ancient building and now dirt roads sitting right there. And the interior, wow. Some of the most beautiful marble, I don't know, sandstone maybe, marble pillars. And again, the, the story would have to be that this was all done by hand, hand tools, pick and ax, and, but it's perfect. It's, it's all perfect and extremely detailed, extremely fine, impressive detail everywhere you look and then eventually we paved some roads on top of the dirt but still there's a full buried city underneath these paved roads
And there's no way we could review ancient architecture in any part of the United States of America without reading about the fires. So of course we've got the great Boston fire of 1872, Boston's largest fire. And it says that the fire consumed 65 acres of Boston's downtown and 776 buildings. So fire destroys almost a thousand buildings. Here's a picture they give us of ruins left by the fire. And uh, I don't know, does fire just blast out huge chunks of the building? Is this picture actually from Boston? And truthfully, I think that yes, because when you go look at these buildings, a lot of them have been burnt and I've looked at them all across the entire country. So yes, there actually have been fires. Mormon 5.5 five in the Book of Mormon, when the Lamanites are destroying Nephite cities, says that the inhabitants thereof that were not gathered in were destroyed by the Lamanites, and their towns and villages and cities were burned with fire. Luke 17.29 in the New Testament, referring to when Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven. And then here's Franklin Street before and after the fire. So beautiful, perfect, ancient architecture. And then it's all crumbled because fire causes brick ovens to crumble. And so I don't know what the full story would be here. The true story would actually be, but I don't think the story that we're being given here is the true story because this isn't fire damage. This is massive earthquake crumbled buildings or millions of cannonballs came and blew up the city and now it's in crumbles, but this isn't what fire does to rock buildings. And here's the section of Boston that supposedly got hit by fire, but I would just say this section got blasted because there were there was amazing architecture there that they just wanted to destroy. Just like the Haywood Square, the Scarlet Square, and a bunch of other cities and a bunch of other states throughout the entire country. Destroy the old world. Many of the buildings were too tall for fire ladders to reach the upper levels. So the cowboys are building massive towers, extremely tall buildings, all out of rock and stone, but they're incapable of a ladder that can be that tall. The pressure from the fire hoses was insufficient to extinguish flames on the roofs of the buildings. Thus the fire could spread from rooftop to rooftop across narrow streets. Many of the affected buildings were of brick and stone, but with wooden framing. So fires on top of all these buildings, they can build these buildings extremely tall and perfect, but they can't build ladders big enough to get up there. So the fire is just up there jumping from building to building, destroying all the domes and towers that used to be on top of them which are energy conductors. Talk about that in previous videos. That's why they're gilded in copper, gold, because gold and copper are some of the best conductors of electricity. And also very interesting, merchandise stored in the attics of warehouses was not considered taxable inventory. So there's merchandise sitting in the tops of these buildings that can't be taxed, meaning the GOV can't make get their cut can't come in and take their cut of it so what do they do what happens fire starts bouncing around on top of all these buildings and busting out the top of these buildings coincidentally destroying all the merchandise that can't be taxed This dude who was in charge of military relief in Chicago post fire, because like I said, fires everywhere in Chicago. Watch my video uh, on the white city. Just look up Columbian World Expo in Chicago. Look at that architecture that they destroyed. <laughs> but this guy who was, you know, uh, in charge of the military relief post the Chicago fire did not condemn the city's use, in this case, Boston, of gunpowder to blow up buildings to create fire bricks. Follow me here. So just up to this point, we're talking about gunpowder being used to blow up buildings. 
why here's the excuse for why in theory this is a theory this isn't a proven true thing this is like maybe <laughs> in theory a fire break creates a gap in, in uh, inflammable material that serves as a barrier where the fire will run out of fuel to spread any further however many fire chiefs in the southern cities were firmly opposed <laughs> to gunpowder created fire breaks after having seen the destruction they caused in the civil war. So we're just seeing another tactic being used to destroy old architecture, gunpowder, just blowing up more of these buildings. And the excuse for why that's happening is, oh yeah, it makes it so the fire can't jump from rooftop to rooftop. And it's also saying that that's how a lot of the architecture was destroyed in the civil war was by gunpowder. Experts have deduced that the fire began in the basement of a warehouse. The warehouse that first caught fire housed dry goods. Then the flames spread to the wooden elevator shaft, a wood elevator shaft, in the center of the building and moved up the floors, fueled by the flammable fabrics in storage, because I skipped over it right here, but it says that um, these, the, this building where the fire started was prime, was dedicated, was a retail, was a warehouse. So there was clothing in there. And so fire starts, finds its way to the elevator, goes whoosh, up the wooden elevator chute. And it's fueled by all the clothing, the clothing that's in there. Finally, the building's wooden mansard roof, because everything we're seeing in all these pictures is wooden, obviously, right? that catches fire and then now the fire is able to spread and start jumping from rooftop to rooftop the heat becomes so intense that stone facades shattered yes because brick ovens shatter when the fire gets really hot just blow up right not like a bomb or gunpowder or cannonballs cause things to blow up cause a brick oven to blow up if you shoot a cannonball at a brick oven, what's going to happen? If you put gunpowder in there, if you set off a bomb in there, what's going to happen? But it's the fire. It's a really intense fire that just shatters these stone buildings. The fire spread through most of Boston's financial district, which became known as the Burnt District. In summation, they blew up the architecture and wrote stories that are nonsensical. Dumb stories. And here's another building that was destroyed by fire, the Trinity Church. I just wanted to look at some of these pictures here. And I mean, we're just looking at a little piece of a castle right here. This is extremely solid. What well, looks, what appears to be granite, surrounded by other rock architecture. I'm not seeing wood. And here it is after the fire, because fires cause rock to shatter, shatter and crumble. Not gunpowder and not cannonballs. Fire does it. And so here's the fire damage. My goodness, more fire. I mean, these buildings clearly look melted, not blown up. Here we've got another millionaire who stepped forward to provide the funds to finish the building and, uh, and provide a new home for the Boston Opera Company. This. Another millionaire. It's like, oh yeah, we want to build some old ancient architecture strictly out of extremely hev heavy brick and stone and marble and granite. And interestingly right here, and I think this is the case, definitely the case sometimes, and actually I can pull up some pictures where we've yeah, there's like, okay, so there was a, we're at the top of the kingdom and they had roads made out of brick. The new disaster comes and leaves new dirt everywhere, but in some cases we can still see the brick underneath the dirt. And then nowadays, in some cases, since we've paved asphalt on top of the dirt, 
in some places you can even still see the brick under the asphalt like we just destroy a lot of it cover a lot of it up pave over the top of it and then make up stories and don't teach anybody about architecture masonry so it didn't just make everybody think that our new wood stick frame homes because they're shiny and have nice paint on them that that's the better more advanced architecture when it is not but then we got a twist in the story here the boston redevelopment authority right we're going to take all this old architecture and redevelop it declared it unsafe and scheduled it for demolition destroyed once again the solidly built building was gutted in 1958 took all the gold everything amazing that was inside of it strip it out like i've shown in previous videos but proved difficult to demolish because these are extremely durable rock buildings they're castles fortresses two demolition companies gave up in frustration they can build all this but taking it down though <laughs> only after a new and larger wrecking derrick arrived did the walls fall so they couldn't bring it down until they came up with bigger better stronger equipment to take it down because this thing is completely stone and is probably like 10 foot thick walls of stone And then we have an amazing, glorious leftover bridge with uh, some really amazing rock art, shields. Uh, I mean, that's how, I'll talk more about this in future videos. But the, the, the people who did build this, they built huge castle kingdoms and fortresses and they had to do that to protect themselves from the other civilizations that wanted to invade and conquer their kingdoms and take over their cities and because like i explained earlier america was largely islands previously that's why everywhere across the whole country on all this old architecture we see shields which is depicting war and castle people and ships because back then that was they had yes they had the trains and all that but because there was so much more water in places on the main what is now the mainland they were they were maritime people boats ships water travel and this bridge is just like i mean this granite right here obviously extremely impressive perfectly made and then you can see underneath it more extremely durable heavy stone perfect arches of steel or whatever that may be just a really really impressive bridge right here Oh, and here's a close yeah here's a little closer look of uh that that design of like the the front of a ship right here and all, all different types of symbolism that we just don't understand because it's not our people our grandfathers our great grandfathers great great grandfathers this isn't them this is much older people and if you really look closely right here i know it's a little bit blurry but right there where i'm hovering my mouse that's a beehive uh, the same types of beehives that you'll find on the architecture in Utah and in other parts of the world as well, not just in this country. And another one here that's just pure insanity. This is one of the, yeah, one of the main ones that really stuck out to me when I was there. It's located on the Harvard University campus. Another quick build, a little bit lengthier this time, seven years. <laughs> Look at this thing, so much brick. So, so, so much brick perfectly stacked you've got arches and arches and arches up here in the towers and these little like turret styled things and just a piece of ancient architecture looking really like a more like a, a cathedral same type of design we see in any of the cathedrals in any of the other ancient parts of the world italy belgium wherever you want to look at them all the cathedrals argentina like <laughs> all the cathedrals everywhere are all the same because they were all built by the same people and it wasn't 
the cowboys in the 1800s. And yeah, they do use wood, right? Look at all this beautiful wood inside of here. But the walls behind this wood and the exterior, there's nothing wood about it. And we even just, like, we don't, this isn't, this is extremely expensive wood. And they did it all by hand, right? Like our wood, our wood these days, we don't, not this. And then here's a look inside what they call the uh, Sanders Theater, supposedly 1876 right here. And just look at the size of this, massive, humongous, of the most advanced, skilled architecture that we find anywhere else in the world. The Cowboys did it. And finally, the Bunker Hill Monument, which is just an obelisk that they've redesignated probably the Boston, what did they call it? The Boston Redevelopment Group <laughs> redeveloped this into a memorial, took the obelisk and redeveloped it into a memorial, a monument of war. And it's a 221 foot granite obelisk. And I did a full video, check out my Bennington, Vermont video. I do a, a full, and, and by the way, you can just go to my playlist and I have playlists uh, according to each state. So you can click into each state that you wanna see that way. But Bennington, Vermont video, I talk about obelisks all over the country. You will be surprised how many of these things are all over the country. very buried because to be able to have something this tall and skinny stand like that it's got to have a much bigger stronger base to it but we just cover that up and just put some grass on it so we don't really know what's under there and then they say that this one did take them a while 1825 to 1843 because they kept running out of funds to build it and this building that sits next to it I'll give you a little better shot of it um, from just the footage that I took this one right here they just call it a lodge. Yeah, a lodge built near the basement of the monument. If you're interested, I have another channel called We Zombie Drive-By, where I just threw a GoPro on my car as I was driving through these cities. And so if you wanna view the city that way, just go check out that channel. There's one for Boston in there. And speaking of obelisks, as I drove into the city of Boston, this is one of the first things that stuck out to me, which is a, it's a bridge, but it's got some very interesting obelisk type structures sitting right on top of it. And then down below it, you'll see just another very old brick building showing signs of fire with a wood ladder out in front of it. That's kind of funny. And then just, you know, new words scratched into rock right there. This building right here, this huge tower I thought was really amazing. Looking like granite. This green, by the way, is, is copper. That's what happens to copper over time as it turns into that green. And we just see amazing pillars of granite right here. We come up a little farther. We see amazing uh, eagles or griffins carved out of this rock, more flower design. Uh, this right, you know, this kind of square design thing right here is very much a Greek Roman, as we think of it, type of design. Again, more more copper up here at the very top, and then just more design at the, like, just a, wow, an amazing tower right there. And then the next thing that stood out to me was, how can this not stand out to you? It, it's the same way I felt when I saw the one in Bennington, Vermont. It's just like, what is that? It just sticks up. It's an ancient obelisk. And you're going to try and tell us that the Cowboys built it. <laughs> and then here's another really cool shot I got of it, which I think says a lot if you pay attention to things. So we've got this huge stone granite obelisk back here, 220 feet tall. Perfectly stacked brick buildings in front of it 
showing signs of fire and weathering and showing signs of being buried because there's windows just shooting into the ground and a, a slope of new dirt that we've just paved right on top of creating our new roads for our cars instead of trains to drive on. And then of course the GOV has placed signs all around this monument telling you what the story is, right? Interestingly, it says in the years following the battle because this is a monument dedicated to the battle that took place here, supposedly, this hill became sacred ground. And I would say that this hill probably already was sacred ground to this ancient civilization. And this is just another interesting thing they say here. The monument was not a symbol of national pride, but a great feat of engineering. The first commercial railway in America was built to transport granite from the quarries in Quincy, Massachusetts. A Boston ship rigger built a special hoisting apparatus to lift the five ton blocks into place. Believe it if you want, <laughs> you can, but uh, five ton blocks and how many of those are right here? And then it's surrounded. I showed you some of the brick building it's surrounded by, but then you also have other extremely old granite ancient buildings that surround it. Got the cardinal compass right there. Lots of weathering. And the, I mean, this whole area, is all of Boston is this stuff, you know? Here's another look at some of the architecture surrounding it. Castle, extremely heavy stone. It's been turned into a church beautiful arches buried right at the ground and I think it's really amazing how they weave the brick with the granite and again they said 5,000 pounds or sorry five yeah five ton, ten thousand pounds five tons per stone for that granite obelisk same thing for these stones here so we're talking about how much weight are we talking here way too much weight for wood carts, way too much weight for a civilization that's just learning how to build. Way too perfect and massive for a civilization that's just really getting started, right? Marble fountain right here. Water used to pour out of that, which is probably copper because it has that green copper oxidized color to it now. And copper is a very clean material to run water through and that sits right in front of the what is now called the masonic hall and you can see the copper at the top of it you can see the marble pillars up there ancient arches like everything just magnificent and right there we see the beehive the same beehive that we find in utah which is supposedly unique to utah right no it is not it is unique to the civilization that built all of this architecture worldwide. Here's just a super chill, low key post office. What? Okay, what are we looking at right here? Ancient civilization. If we're the ones who build this, why aren't we depicting ourselves? If we're so skilled to be able to do this stuff, like why aren't we showing ourselves off on it? Instead, we're showing very old, ancient, what we think of as Greek goddesses and all that. And if you pay att close attention to this cape, Watch this video for more on this. But that same, the cape, the robe, you know, you find that on the Guardians of Traffic in Cleveland. All over the country, these type of people are depicted in rock, like perfectly depicted in rock with that same type of cape robe design, just showing that it was a, unified same civilization that's not us and those you know the flowery leaf designs right here on the side of the shield flag looking thing i was just reviewing some footage of madison wisconsin same exact designs there on extremely impressive granite old architecture buildings yep exactly like these ones right here same thing
just another very, very impressive rock, castle, huge tower on it, arches, pillars, everything. At the top here, we've got a little piece of copper, another piece of a castle, really amazing tower on it. And then here's like a little gateway. And uh, I thought this was pretty cool. You can see the little lion heads on top of there. And so that one right there says 1838, which uh, again, if that's the true date, they just, they had the technology and everything already in 1838, like better than us. Cause we don't build the, we, we don't, we're cheap wood and plastic people is really what we are now. But these people were not cheap or inefficient. They were moving extremely heavy amounts of material stacking and working them perfectly into perfect massive structures with all types of statues and animals and flowers and greek and roman designs as we think of them depicted all over them and then here's a look at that building on harvard university i think they called it the memorial hall and it's very mind-blowing so much brick everything again just per like this is i'm sure you could find maybe a flaw here and there but like i don't know though honestly the these buildings honestly seem perfect. And I think I forgot to mention earlier, but the roof as well, this beautiful colored roof, also made out of rock. Very, very impressive tower on it here. Like, what the heck is this? <laughs> we do not do this. And look at this copper gargoyle shooting off of the turret over here. Another one right here. It's got a hole in the mouth. Like these probably shot water out again copper water and then if we take a closer look we can see different people engraved out of stone depicted in stone on these buildings because that's what we do our civilization right we we build stone statues showing ourselves it's not the old world that did that. I believe this one's still on the Harvard campus. I might be wrong on that. But again, we see a beautiful entryway, archway here with a what we would think of as Greek Roman head perfectly carved out of stone depicted on it. And then as I pan this shot up, we'll see we've got the copper dome with very interesting, well, a lot of people would refer to as antiquitech, ancient technology sitting on top of it. Very interesting. This one I thought was super, super cool. I mean, look at this rock work. It's not as like crispy and, and perfect. I mean, it is still perfect, but each block isn't perfectly cut like these other buildings we're seeing. Um, well, I mean, which makes it more difficult, right? But they were so skilled, they didn't have a problem with that. We've got a cool tower on it with a bell and then some more Antiquitech ornamentation on the top. And pay attention to these. This is something that's kind of easy to overlook, but this isn't a little curb that they built right here. This is a buried large wall, and we're just seeing the tippity top of it poking up right here. And just more <laughs> amazing amounts of brick and more amazing stone art way beyond what they would have been doing at that time and depicting the old world the ship right here and then if we look down closely here at the bottom these are like fish or uh, ocean creatures with faces on them And then here's a little look at the state house, very under construction right now, or deconstruction, I don't know. But you can see just massive walls, like super, super thick, solid stone. And then it's really interesting because it changes from this gray stone to this white marble, to this yellow brick. We've got the new date scratched into it right there. It's an ancient palace is really what it is.
an ancient fortified palace temple not 1800s federal gov another seemingly random statue monument pillar tower with incredible depictions of people animals all carved out of rock some marble pillars in the mix i mean it just looks like bible stories are being depicted and then here's a look at the front of the state house they've got this black screen in front of it for whatever construction they're doing we've got the gold dome on top i thought this building was really cool and had some interesting things to look at on it i think we can definitely see some signs of fire here and we can definitely see old world architecture all over it really intricate designs in the rock we can see copper here around these windows and then we've got some faces depicted in copper right here and then there's this building which is called the congregational house and you know we see signs of fire perfectly stacked brick beautiful arches but i really wanted to focus on on this one is the stories that are depicted on it these are nephite stories that are depicted here so we see right here this man a nephite holding a book of scripture the word preaching to lamanites what we think of as indians native american indians if you read the book of mormon there was a group of called the nephites that settled these lands and were extremely prosperous and spread across all the face of the lands which is why we see all the same architecture everywhere but they got into wars with themselves and kind of split into two groups so there's the nephites and the lamanites and the lamanites is what we think of as native american indians and this is what we're seeing right here is a nephite as told many times in the book of mormon going to the lamanites to preach to them the word of god here's another depiction of the nephites we see prayer we see scripture another very cool building looking very very old amazing arches on it same type of design same type of everything as everywhere else in the world when we look at this old architecture and just another beast 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 of a building right here we see this kind of rougher granite here transfer into this smoother stone and then all these little steppings on the edge we see the copper around the windows and then if we come over here now we can see this sloping of new land that has buried this perfect very tall very durable building and here's a look at the other side of the state house another look at the gold dome tipped with an acorn and then it also has this uh, big pillar monument with an eagle on top of it i mean would this not be extremely excessive for the time period and for the technologies and for it being all across the country everywhere marble uh, handrails <laughs> like what three three foot marble handrails here's another building with some really interesting depictions on it so right here we see more we see crowns and shields and crosses and wheels and anchor ropes bird uh, these, this is all old world depiction kneeling angels with wings kneeling at an altar now lifting up the altar another shield with old world depictions on it old world language on it and then if we come up here we just find more and more and more you know i would say that's possibly noah's ark or maybe the boat that nephite built here we see a, a bird and some water you know, I don't know what all of these mean. I wish I did. Some of them I can kind of get an idea, but one thing I think we can, you know, right, a dove depicting the Holy Ghost. Clearly we can tell this isn't us, right? But it sure does match the description of the Nephites and the Lamanites given in the Book of Mormon. Here's another tower with some interesting antiquitech on top of it. And I thought this building was really amazing too. I mean, look at the intricate artwork in the rock there. How perfectly stacked and how the colors 
uh, alternate like and they form the little diamond shapes with the crosses in them and like right here I mean look let's look at some of these there's like a whale creature a book of scripture again with the crown in it I, th this is a cross scripture it's all religious and many of these buildings I'm showing are not religious buildings by any means but that is what is on all of these buildings because the people the Nephites that built these they were very religious. They had a very deep understanding and belief in God and his ways. And so where are these people? What happened to them? Why don't we have the stories of them? They obviously got wiped out if they're not here. And the Book of Mormon explains that. It's because stop following God. The Bible explains that. Stop following God. And eventually it leads to your destruction. Jude 1, 5 in the New Testament of the Bible says, Ye once knew this, how that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, referring to Moses escaping Egypt, parting the Red Sea, afterward the Lord destroyed them that believed not. Helaman 13.6 in the Book of Mormon, Heavy destruction awaiteth this people. It surely will happen to this people. Nothing can save this people except repentance and faith on the Lord Jesus Christ. I really like these when you can see just like our cheap way of slapping signs and it, like, it literally says budget, which is funny on this one because the building behind it says the exact opposite. There's nothing quick, cheap, fast, or budget about this building. This is advanced, perfect, extremely heavy, huge tower, old world architecture. And some more copper statues perfectly depict perfectly made depicting very realistic people and again what are we seeing scripture book of scripture and ancient symbols and it's made out of copper and the book of mormon says that the nephites built out of copper and stone or gold and it says they worked with their hands and they had tools and machinery just like is depicted right here and a boy looking up towards heaven towards God with his palms open symbolizing being open to receiving what God has to say but this is all just random statue stuff that the cowboys built right out of copper and it's perfect and extremely realistic and tells us a, a religious story and then you can still find some buildings like this where there's still some gold sitting on it. And, like, and I think in most cases, like it's rare, I've seen this in some cities, but it's rare to still, still see gold on these buildings. Most of it has been stripped off. And, you know, when they went in and gutted these buildings, it was for a lot of the gold. We're just seeing ruins, leftovers, some of them in, still in, intact, very much so but also very, very stripped. Like this old, dull, gray building out here, there's no way the builders of that were like, yeah, it would just be like a nice, dull gray. They dress these things up a lot. What has happened is people came and stripped them for everything they got. Lots of cases even just demolished them all the way to the ground.